Hello everyone and welcome back to Shonen Archive. I'm Wokey and I'm here with Zenrot. Hello. And what's Shonen Archive? I'm glad you asked. Shonen Archive is a series in which me and Zen watch all Shonen Jump anime that is currently available to us in a way, in an easily digestible form and in English at the same time. Um, throughout the entire history of Shonen Jump, past, present, and even future, whenever the, those stuff, <laughs> the manga that have yet to been ad- adapted into anime. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, the spooky future. And we plan to do this until uh, the universe itself decides to implode in us, or me and Zen get taken out by some kind of mysterious object. Whatever it may be, I'm hoping it's a steel chair. Or until, uh, Wokey posts a 2,000 character. <laughs> or until I post it, yeah, I think you've also made it very clear, if I post a 2,000 character tweet, the show is it's done. It's over. It's over, Cause... That's, the, that's the deadline. Because <laughs> I'll be blocked, and I won't be able to contact you anymore. <laughs> Yeah, and we, of course, the main series that we go through are Gintama, and the other two that we switch off on a week-by-week basis is Kuroko's Basketball and Jujutsu Kaisen. So today, what are we going to be talking about? Well, today we're going to be talking about episodes 106, 107, 108, and 109 of Gintama. I was very busy with work, so I wasn't able to get that last one in, but we will save that for next week where I have less of a crazy work schedule so i'll actually be able to legitimately see the six and have there will be no issue (laughs) but yeah we'll be going through these four are you ready for it zen i am ready all right let's talk about some football get it because soccer is also football (laughs) everywhere but america (laughs) (laughs) 106 zen love is often played out in sudden death tell us what it's about so uh, we've got this soccer player here, um, and it kind of leads up uh, like to a, a climactic moment, and then it cuts back to the beginning, uh, where we see like a "How did we get here?" and we learn that Kagura poisoned this guy's soccer team accidentally or on purpose. I don't remember. <laughs> it she, she, they purpose. asked for Bakari, and she gave him line chalk. <laughs> I, I didn't yeah, feel it was it. chalk powder in their beverages. Which did not feel uh, so malicious. Get poisoned. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, he wanted to retire in this game, and so he's like, you know, this was going to be my last game, and I had to make, you know, I had to impress this kid. And they're like, all right, fine, we'll make a, we'll make a team to come and, and join you at the last minute, you know, to to throw a team together. And it's you know, everyone that you expect it to be. It's uh, <laughs> Otai. It's Kondo, uh, Hasegawa, Katsura, and Elizabeth. Is that, is that all the other? That's all the other. Shimpachi, Kagura, and well, Sachan. Well, Shimpachi, Kagura, and, and yeah. Oh, it, Sachan. That's yeah. All, yeah, Sachan was there too. Um, and they have a really great little sequence here where all of them think it's a different variation on testicles. <laughs> um, <laughs> and Sachan's like laying on the ground naked in a towel. And she's like, all right, Kitoki, take your balls out. <laughs> and then he hits her in the face with a Captain Tsubasa, like, special attack. The, the tiger kick. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, yeah, they're all, like, various. Or, actually, I think the only one that doesn't say it's about balls is Otai, who only heard kicking. She, so yeah, she's in, like, a kickboxing outfit. Yeah, she's ready for Mutai boxing. <laughs> yeah. That's why she came here to fight. Um, and then Hasegawa is like, I heard this was a game where the winner is the one that can do the most impressive thing with their balls. <laughs> <laughs> and then Kondo's was something about, like, making sushi wraps. Yeah, but he's also <laughs> naked. He's also naked, yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> that opening shot where it's them immediately naked, like, helping each other out was the fucking, fucking killed me immediately. <laughs> it was so unexpected. <laughs> Uh, they get out onto the field. Well, at first they're like, "Wait, we only have ten people. Soccer is an eleven-person sport. What are we gonna do?" And a janitor walks by, <laughs> and Gintoki just grabs the janitor, and he's like, "All right, we got him." Um, but they realize that when they get on the field, the entire opposing team looks the same. They all look identical, and they're like, "Yeah, uh, this is a team of eleven brothers that were all born at the same time." Yeah, which is based off of that anime because they all look like that guy too the the fuck what is the name of that 
a, a, there's like, it's like a, it, man, just recent, seven twin anime, I think is what, something will put come up. Damn you! Okay, yes, here it is. It is the Osomatsukun. It's the one where they all look the same. I think that is what it's called. There we go. You wouldn't. I think there were like six se- se- septuplets. I only know this because they recently got like a uh, new anime, so that's why I understand understood this reference. I'm just gonna show you this just to prove it. You'll look at them and go like, "Oh yeah, that's exactly what they look like." Yeah, do you look like that? Yeah, it's 100 just them. <laughs> So yeah, they're fighting against an entire team of them. It's <laughs> <laughs> pretty funny. Yeah. Um, we have a bunch of like difficulties on the field. The the uh, the main guy whose name is like Amaro, which is really weird because that's also the name of the aliens. Um, yeah, it's dangerously close. Yeah, he's like quick. Everybody guard your man, and so Sachan jumps in front of Gintoki, and she's like, "I got my man." <laughs> and uh, Kondo, Kondo does, it does t- the same thing with Otai. Yeah, it says, "I got my man." Um, they both like dive to try to grab them, and Otai and uh, Gintoki kick the two of them away, and uh, the ball just goes right past them toward the goal. <laughs> and then uh, it turns out there are three people playing goalkeeper. It's Hasegawa, Katsura, and Elizabeth. And they're fighting over, like, goal space. Katsura makes a little line, and he's like, don't cross my line at the goal. <laughs> and they're all fighting, and then Elizabeth hits them both and starts giving them a speech that's like, we should share this space because we're teammates. But teammates is, like, written in blood. <laughs> It's like really bold red letters. It is. And they both start crying about like how sweet the theme of teamwork is. And then the ball gets scored in their goal immediately. Uh- <laughs> and then they find out that he's like really injured. Um, he's like, he says he's so, uh, he's so hurt from like his, all of his sports injuries, the badges of honor that he's gotten on the court or the field or whatever. And then uh, it, it comes to light that they're all from, like, just, like, fucking around with girls and stuff and, like, not trying very hard. Uh, so they all get pissed off. Uh, and the first half of the game ends. Then they go into the second half of the game and they all decide that they're going to just um, try to get one goal for him so he can make his little boy proud because they see a boy cheering for him in the stands that kind of looks like him. Mm-hmm. Um they all make like this elaborate battle be- like scene where they're all samurai and foot soldiers and stuff mm-hmm. uh, to get him the ball. And they finally get the ball over where he can score only for them to realize that the little boy he was talking about was his penis and he was trying to impress this girl in the stands. Uh, and he kicks the ball and it- he hits the, goal- the metal part of the goal instead of actually going into the goal. And he doesn't score and the girl is unimpressed. And then I think he actually gets hit in the dick with the ball after he kicked it. Yes, it, uh, and it he, like, like blacks out on the ground of the on the ground, and everyone's like, "Fuck this guy!" <laughs> and that's how it ends. And then they also reveals that the little the little boy. It's really because this is really playing on the fact that this is the only other character who is of dark skin because this little boy is the same complexion as him, and then we see his father show up at the end. Yeah, the little boy that's supposed to be his kid, and then he's like, Dad! And his dad walks over, he's like, alright, yeah. let's go. <laughs> let's go. <laughs> really playing on the fact of, like, well, clearly, this has to be what he's talking about. It was very, I thought it was actually very well done. Because I was really thinking about that, there's not a lot of characters that are actually of uh, darker... Well, that's not true. If you actually look at the naked picture of Hasegawa and Kondo, you can see one is clearly of a different skin tone than the other, but you get what I'm saying. Of a darker skin tone. I think this is one of the very... Why was Elizabeth made darker in the beginning of this episode? I think the Elizabeth was one of the characters from Captain Tsubasa, who also has a darker complexion, I think. Who has, like, a tan. If I'm remembering my Captain Tsubasa right, you're gonna have to forgive me on some of this. It's been a while since I've read the opening chapters of Captain Tsubasa. (laughs) But the, I know, so I like the the I'm not Captain Tsubasa, I'm Captain Katsura. Yeah, that's really good because he has to be Captain Katsura because Kondo's on the team. <laughs> yeah, because he has to hide because Kondo's there. Master of disguise, <laughs> Katsura. 
So, yeah, let me give my opinions about this one. I thought this was a fucking fantastic episode. I'm, I'm really glad that we gave it a, a break from last week, because this one completely... The funny, there's a tonal whiplash where this episode is located between the arc that happened before and the mini arc that happens afterwards. <laughs> where I feel like they got all their jokes out in this one. Where they were just like, we're just going to have a real goofy good time because we know that the next yeah, couple episodes... It, it would have really sucked if we had gone from the last one to this one to the next two. Cause this one would have absolutely been like the shitty one that we talked shit about. But starting off an episode with this one, it wasn't so bad. No, no. I, I, I had a very fun time watching it. Um, I don't know why. I, I remember there's a joke, I think it was from a female comedian, that said like, men think that their penis is funnier than they actually are. But I... <laughs> think of someone who actually legitimately thinks there's something funny about just a naked dude showing up. <laughs> because when Kondo and Hazugawa show up and they're just kind of working out and being very nonchalant and hanging out next to each other, it's very funny to me. Uh, that opening scene where he's showing off the entire team is also just really hilarious of how much it seems like no matter what. Because it makes me wonder, what the hell did they tell Kentoki? Because obviously uh, Shinpachi and Kagura know what he's talking about. But it makes it sound like all he said was... It's a game where you kick balls, or it's a game that you play with balls, and then didn't elaborate, and then went to go find someone else. <laughs> um, I like Sachans especially because she's like, oh, like they, uh, the the way that they perceive it differently. Like obviously, when she says like, oh, I, all I heard is that all you need to do is that you play with balls with your feet. That's amazing. Let's go. Bring, <laughs> give me your balls. <laughs> I mean, also really funny that she's also laid out, like, in a sexy pose compared to everyone else. Yeah, and she's in only a towel, I think, as well. <laughs> yeah, which is really funny. Um, obviously, the, all the Captain Tsubasa. But it's also funny because he says, I'm not Captain Tsubasa, and I think he does the most Captain Tsubasa references out of everyone. <laughs> so the point was there's one point later on where Shinpachi yells at them. Uh, because he's like pretending to be injured and he's like, no coach, I can play. <laughs> and he's like, will you stop acting out Captain Tsubasa scenes? Yeah, that's really funny. That's really good. Um, there's a, there's also a bit of when, uh, after Ty kicks, um, Kondo square in the nuts. Um, it's during the kick where both him and Sachan get kicked at the same time. Uh, she goes to Shinpachi, Shinpachi, I did it, I cleared two balls, because <laughs> he says, like, you need to clear the ball, and she's like, got it, and she kicks him square in the nuts and goes, I cleared two of them, let's go. Shinpachi goes, young women shouldn't be talking about balls. <laughs> yeah, and then later on, I think she says, like, please refrain from saying such vulgar things, such as this, this, and then, like, it gets censored <laughs> completely out. <laughs> also, Kondo got amnesia again. Oh, yeah, that's right, because it got kicked so hard in the... <laughs> yeah, he said I got kicked so hard in the balls that my memory blanked out. So he did not know we're playing soccer, and he's like, to be honest, I don't really remember much after the net kick. Oh, uh, which is really good. Uh, there's also a bit where they're doing, like, they get uh, baseball bats, and I think that's what causes it, because he's with Sachan and the old man, because the old man also has a baseball bat that's, like, weekly going like they are. Yeah, like really terribly swinging it. Um, yeah, which is which is funny. Um, the soccer player ended up being uh, funny enough. I think the soccer player is actually the weakest part of this because he ends up being the straight man for a lot of the antics. I think the funniest bits with him are the ones where he gets injured because he's such an unbelievable piece of shit. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like we learned that the reason that he got even injured was that it makes it seem like he got injured because of how serious he takes the game, but he actually got injured at like a host club. Uh, where he was showing off to a girl, and that's the one that was there at the end of doing his endgame dance after scoring a goal. Um, that's how he ended up getting himself injured, and that's why they keep continuously getting angry at him, because, like, this is all your fault, this is all you're doing. Like, the reason that you have to retire is for so, so much stupid reasons. Um, I also like it when it, he's going to get a penalty, because uh, he's like, finally, all I need to do is score a goal. He's not looking to win. He just wants to score a single goal, and that's when Kagura shows up. And Kagura goes for a kick, and I think she immediately kicks him in the face with the ball, doesn't she? <laughs> when she, when yeah, he goes, she interests him immediately in the second half. Yeah, and when he wakes up, the score is now zero to eight. <laughs> just play the worst amounts of soccer. Um, I also like when Elizabeth's inner self came out to go 
protect the the, the goal because eventually they just let uh, Elizabeth be the goalie by himself. Yeah, the arms come out of the beak and grab the ball. Yeah, and the people, the commentator is like, it really makes you question what's going on with Elizabeth. <laughs> but what a catch! <laughs> Fantastic <laughs> stuff. Uh, and yeah, also the whole bit where they're uh, being the soldiers to get the ball up there is really funny. Yeah, that bit's... Yeah. How guy was running up, and he's like, I'm, I'm really used to sacrificing myself for the team. <laughs> yeah, he's... He, they're all symbolized as of what their roles would be in a war, and he's the the, the foot soldier, the, the one who... Sacrificial foot soldier, yeah. The one who rushes in recklessly, uncaring for his life. Uh, I also and like that... The, Shimpachi's mm-hmm. the horse. Yes, Jambachi's the horse. Oh, that's also when Kagura's doing the pass. He's like, let's pass it. All she's doing is fucking hitting him in the face with the soccer yeah, ball. Yeah, she's bouncing the ball off Shimpachi's head over and over again. Just ba 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 ba. Yeah, she keeps saying pass every pass. time and doing it. <laughs> that was good. Uh, the one useful thing that Sashan does where she's like, who's the fastest thing in the court? That's right, the shinobi of war. In general, everyone gets their little war moment, even the old man who... <laughs> Who yeah, the f- when the one guy is there and he turns around, he's like, ah, and he's, the old man catches it and he's like, go on without me. Yeah, he's like, why are you so cool all of a sudden? <laughs> that was really good. Like, yeah, this was, for me, uh, a fantastic episode. I love it. I don't know if it's because of my, there's like a deep part of me that really likes funny soccer things. Like, I love Shaolin soccer. I love any anime that takes the time to do, like, a sports theme episode when they're not a sports thing. It's typically the best one. Like, obviously, Samurai Champloo has the famous example where they play a baseball game that ends with them just completely fucking each other over while playing baseball. Uh, The Boondocks also has an example with that with kickball. I think it's something I never get tired of of when they play. There was a Dragon Ball Super episode, which is one of the only ones where... Yeah, obviously. I I remember... I've only seen, like, a couple episodes of Dragon Ball Super, and one of those is the Yamcha baseball one. Yes, that one's so good. Yeah. He ends up doing the dead Yamcha pose in the hole. Yes. (laughs) They hit the ball too hard. Yes, absolutely fantastic. And, uh, yeah, I really liked this episode. I thought it was a good, funny... And I thought it was actually a good breather for what was about to go into for the next one, because the next one does not have very many jokes going into it. Well, it has a lot of jokes, actually, but it, it's just really heavy. Yeah, it gets real heavy real quick, uh, with a quickness that was uh, caught me off guard by the end of it. Uh, so, yeah, I really... How do you feel about it, though, Zen? Yeah, it was good. It was funny. Uh, any sports episode, they're always funny. Uh, mm. I don't know why, because it was just another example of like a Gintama random ass gag episode. I don't know where, but for some reason, sports episodes are always funny. Um, I really liked the Kagura using Shimpachi's head as, like to bounce the ball off of to get around defenders. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, when they're visualized, uh, they're like the cavalry, and <laughs> Kagura's on the horse, but then Shimpachi's not the other <laughs> cavalry rider. He's Kagura's horse. Even though there's another cavalry guy in that shot. It's yeah, yeah. he's just the horse. It actually took me a while. I was like, where is he? And he's like, oh no, he's the horse. Yeah, he's the horse. Um, <laughs> all of it was good. It was really funny. I like the reveal at the end that he's only playing to try to get with that girl. And they all just were like, all right, I gotta get the fucking out of here. <laughs> Let's all leave him. I also like that girl's reaction, which is just like, spits and then leaves. Yeah, she spits and gets up and leaves. You know you're cooked when a woman spits at the general and <laughs> you didn't even do anything. She just spits at the mere concept of you. You're done. You're cooked, son. That's it. And yeah. Also appreciated all the Captain Tsubasa. As a deep lover of Captain Tsubasa video games, there was also a reference to the Captain Tsubasa video game in here. <laughs> ah, good times. Good times. All right, Zen. Are you ready to move on to the next episode? I am. All right. Let's talk about episode 107, which is called No Child Knows How Dear He Is to His Parents, which I'm almost positive is not what it was called on Crunchyroll, which I think it was something along the lines of kids don't understand how their parents feel. No, no. Oh that's God, very yeah, similar. That sounds right. Yeah, yeah. There's a. Yeah. Okay. Those are the two titles, though. <laughs> Choose whichever one sound. Both of them sound <laughs> equally in telling with the theme. Go ahead, Zen. 
So uh, the episode starts, they're in a limousine, and they're all, like, really proud of themselves, like, looking around the limousine, wondering who it is that hired them, because it's so nice and everything. Um, and they're talking about, like, oh, is it a government agent? Is it, like, uh, who, who, you know, we're getting really famous if we're getting driven out like this. Uh, and it ends up being the Yakuza. Um, the, the Yakuza boss explains that his son has been locked in this warehouse for five years and he won't come out and he only communicates with little notes through the door. Um, usually demands for food or, like, manga or stuff. Um, and so he hired them and he wants to get them to get him out of the how, the, the warehouse. Uh, Kagura immediately starts shooting it with her gun. And they all jump in and like, stop doing that. And Shinpachi's the only one who's like actually afraid of the Yakuza. The other two are like, not, they don't care at all. Um, they end up showing up in like police, like hostage negotiation outfits. And they're telling him like, you have, you can come out now or we're going to bust the door in. Um, and that doesn't work. So then they try the same plan that they did way back in the episode with the mushroom, the, the, um, the, um, the Last of Us episode, where the mushrooms, funguses are infecting people and making them monsters. Oh. Uh, where they're going to cook the meat and the allure of the meat is going to make the people abandon whatever they're doing. Um, I have not seen The Last of Us, so I was just like, oh, that's a pretty no, good... No, no, the, the episode of Gintama, where the fungus oh. is turning everyone into monsters, and the guy, the samurai guy, has to kill his bear friend. Oh yes, that's right. Okay, you. I was. I was confused. I was like, "Are you talking about the la- the last Pedro Pascal did that? that that's crazy." No, I'm just, no, I'm talking about the episode of Gintama that's just the Last of Us. Oh where yeah, the fungus <laughs> takes over your brain and makes you a monster. Yes, yes. Now I'm remembering. Boom. Actually, Gintama did that shit first. Nothing original from the Last nothing of Us. Nothing is ever. Yeah, nothing is ever original. Um, Take that, Sony. Continue on. <laughs> yeah. So they're like, "Yeah, we're gonna have the and the plan name." For having the for like the the meat enticing him to come out is like really long. Uh, it's it's the ah, it looks fun out there. Uh, and then it's like it looks fun out there, and then he's gonna peek out of the door, and then once he peeks out of the door, we grab him. Plan. <laughs> <laughs> um, they and then they're like, okay, if that doesn't work, we're gonna leave the grill the meat on the grill until it gets so burned that it makes a bunch of smoke, and then we're gonna smoke him out of the building. And every time they have a shitty plan, the Yakuza threaten them with, like, different weapons until they get to the point that they're, like, using guns because they're so mad. <laughs> um, they decide that they're going to use their uh, last-ditch special plan that they have had the whole time. And it was just Kagura shooting the building again, and it's the exact <laughs> same frame as the first time she did it. Not different at all. No, not at um, all. That's the exact same scene. And uh, he sends a little message out that's goodbye written in blood. Because then they're like, oh my god, you killed him. Um, and then we see the lieutenant of the Yakuza. He's like, it's not blood. Um, he's fine. And then it turns out that they want to... He wants to see his son again before he dies because he's very ill. He throws up blood and they rush him to the hospital. Uh, Gintoki stays behind. And he kind of has a chat with this lieutenant. Um... And we kind of learn the story of the son who didn't... He didn't want to be a Yakuza. He didn't want to live like his father did. His father wanted him to be his heir. Um, he eventually reveals that, like, the father would hassle this place that the son went to. Like, he went to become, I think, like a textile guy. Like, make clothes mm-hmm. and stuff. Um, and the dad would come and, like, hassle the store owner and, like, wreck the place until he came back. Um, so in an act of rebellion, he got fired, and then he went home, but he locked himself in this warehouse. Um, the old man is bedridden, uh, asking if his son is there, and Gintoki gets sick of waiting and goes to break it open. And then the lieutenant guy uses his cell phone to open it, and it's revealed there's just a woman in there, like, eating chips and watching TV. Um... And that's when we learn that the son has been dead for a really long time, and he said that he killed the son, and he's going to take over the Yakuza when the old man dies. Um, Gintoki and him start scrapping for a bit, and Gintoki outdoes him, and then he reveals that the drink that they shared was poisoned. Gintoki starts struggling because of the poison, but he's still able to fend off the Yakuza just fine. Um, 
he escapes for a bit, and they fight on top of a bridge. And then the second in command, I think they, like the lieutenant, junior captain, or whatever they call him, ends up shooting Gintoki in the back, and he falls into a river. Uh, the men look for his body, but the lieutenant says, forget it, no one would, his wounds were fatal anyway, it doesn't matter. And then they all leave when they get the message on the phone that the old man has died. Uh, and yeah, that's the end of this one. <clears throat> it ends up being a lend ending up on a cliffhanger that we will talk about in the next one. But first, let's talk about this one. Uh, the beginning part of it was actually completely threw me for a loop because I actually thought that they were doing a save. Um, <laughs> they were doing a save animation and budget episode because they just kept reusing the same frames of animation over and over again. <laughs> like I, the the when the shot when Kagura shoots the building the second time and it's exactly the same is so fucking funny. It is, and I think it's probably because they have made so many jokes about how they use, they like to reuse animation to save money because of their budget that I notice it more, but th that that bit where it was just like, it definitely felt like they were just using the same, exact same ones over and over again just to do different gags and occasionally like changing their clothes, like when they were in the Riot gear outfits and stuff like that. Um, I ended up liking that whole bit there too, because uh, they, they just kept going. <laughs> Um, I like the beginning here because it does end up kind of tidying up for the next episode, which I think it actually starts with an introduction of like a, like a little kid and he's being talked about and he's being called the, he's being called a guardian dog and then it actually goes into the plot, which is them, uh, in the limousine, if I'm remembering correctly. Uh... Uh, yeah, and I like their interactions with the Yakuza. I like the reveal that they're immediately with the Yakuza and how f afraid they are, even though I'm pretty sure Kagura could probably handle the majority Kagura of these. Kagura was, like, in the Yakuza at one point, wasn't she? Yeah, she was. <laughs> that's a, that, <laughs> I was like, I'm pretty sure Kagura can handle most of this, but Shinpachi couldn't. So, <laughs> that's the one thing that I was... also really like the bit in the beginning where Kentucky's like, oh god, they're gonna make us smuggle drugs. Uh, and then the old man's name is like a pun on snorting white powder. Oh, yeah. and, then, and then the son's name is a pun on shooting up white powder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. They just kept going. It, it continues on with the Hasegawa bit where they talked about him like delivering white powder for someone. <laughs> yeah, a lot of uh, a lot of uh, cocaine references that you would not expect from <laughs> a Shonen Jump <laughs> property. But yeah, I really like that bit as well. Um... I thought it was it's it's really funny because the 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 change from when the second the old man gets sick, there's a definite feeling of like things are like completely different now, and it was very interesting to see it actually happen in the in between. Because the in between parts, you would never expect something was about to happen so crazy just based off of how the episode was going. <laughs> That yeah, was... it goes from, like, total joke episode to, like, really serious really fast. Yeah, really quickly, and in that quick amount of time, I was very just, like, into what was about to happen here. Um, I like the drink that he shared with uh, Gintoki. The junior boss and him have a have a drink to share together, and Gintoki makes mention of it while he's drinking it. That he says, like, oh, this tastes terrible. It must be because a man's pouring it for me. Yeah. Um, and then it turns out, like, it was, it was because he could feel it was poisoned. <laughs> I also like uh, when he starts feeling, like, the impact of the poison. He goes, oh, I guess the reason it tasted terrible wasn't only because a man poured it for me, <laughs> implying that was part of the reason. But it just wasn't all of the reason. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and then I also like when Gintoki just starts fighting while just horribly injured. <laughs> Because he has a gunshot wound, he's poisoned, and he's still pretty easily taking down a that lot of these Yakuza dudes. Uh huh. Yeah, he's crushing these dudes. But yeah, it's only up until the end when he's running away because he's trying to get away to go tell the others what's happening. Is when he gets shot in the back and falls over. Even then, when he falls over, it seems like very clearly like he's gonna end up being okay because he made sure to fall himself. Um, we've seen him go through way worse at the beginning of the Benny Zakra, so I think he would be perfectly yeah. okay from taking that. But still, it was pretty cool to see him get that way. I'm always down for some cool swordplay stuff. Always good. 
And yeah, and I was also very actually kind of surprised. Like I was very quickly invested. I was like, okay, what's going on? Because I wasn't sure where the episode was going to go. Like even up until the next episode, I was still trying to figure out what was happening and trying to be like, okay, he's saying this, but I'm not a hundred percent sure that I'm buying it. Like it feels like there's something more here um, that I need to see what's going on and. Yeah, I also didn't expect the old man to actually die that same episode. Like, I actually thought it was going to end. Neither did I. I didn't think he was going to die so quickly. Yeah, I was like, oh shit, he he's actually dead. Because I, I was totally somebody was like, okay, here's what I'm thinking. Uh, it turns out he's somewhere else. This guy's probably helping. And then, like, they're going to actually find him. And then they're going to track him down. And then he's going to see him before he goes. No, doesn't go that way at all. This man dies never seeing his son. <laughs> he never. Yes. Never. And I was like, god damn. I thought that was pretty messed up, and then the next episode happens, but we'll talk about what happens in the next one after I ask you specifically how'd you feel about this one, Zen? So, I liked it. Um, it it definitely feels a little tone, tonal shift, and, and like almost kind of abruptly. Because mm-hmm. it goes from like almost all jokes, and the whole episode is played for laughs, and then this old man just suddenly starts vomiting blood. And it becomes very serious really fast. Um, I liked Gintoki's little speech. I like when he gives his little emotional speeches. Um, those are always good. I like uh, the the fighting. Gintoki just beating the shit out of the Yakuza while he's like got a bullet wound in his arm and he's drugged and he's still fighting him off was cool. Um, and yeah, I'll talk about it more in the next one, because that's when things start getting a little bit more obvious. But in this one, I was kind of wondering, like, this guy doesn't really seem like the bad guy mm. of what's going on. Um, yeah, you weren't so ne- was... you weren't buying the whole act that he was yeah, giving. Yeah, because he had this whole thing going on of like, ha ha ha, I'm going to take over the Yakuza because I'm evil or whatever. But like, I don't know, it was just the way it was delivered was weird. And Gintoki also was like, not as weirded out about it as you think you would be. Um, mm. So I don't know. It was, I had a lot of thoughts about where it was going to go. At first I thought like, Oh, this guy, this is all fake. And he is hiding the sun. Cause it's the only way to get the sun out of the lifestyle was to, to make up some excuse. So the sun's actually off somewhere alone and happy. Um, and that's why he's got people on the rotation is cause that way it throws the dad off the scent of where he is. Uh, that sure as shit wasn't it. Mm-mm. <laughs> Did not end up being that at all. But that yeah, no. that's what I assumed where it was going. Uh, yeah, so I guess we'll, we'll, it was a good episode. Uh, we'll move on to 108 because that's when it wraps up. Yes, and 108 is called Some Things Are Better Left Unsaid. Uh, yeah, and yeah, things are, things are definitely left unsaid. Go ahead and tell us what happens yeah. in this one, Zen. So, uh... We're at the funeral, and we hear that the lieutenant is going to be the successor. Uh, Kagura and Shampachi are trying to find Gintoki, and they can't. And the Yakuza is not helping them out. Um, when he says, uh, uh, Shampachi's like, he's like our family. Um, he has like this moment where he looks at a picture of the old man when he was younger and himself as a child, and he's like... Um, you know, bad things happen to good people if you get into Yakuza business. So, like, you should just leave and stop fucking around here. Uh, there's a meeting held at a bar talking about him taking over the gang. Um, and they're like, there's, you know, there's concern about this rumor that he's the one who killed the son, actually, and like he took over by force. Um, and they all come to a, an agreement that they're going to kill him instead. Uh, he gets a letter that says that he's going to take over as the head of the new gang or whatever. So then he goes to the succession ceremony and he's like doing the thing. And then Gintoki's voice is like, "Why are you know, why are you being so formal? I thought we were buddies. You know, we were just hanging out." Um, they fight a little bit for a minute because Gintoki smacks him in the face with his sword. Um, And the guy's like, you know, you knocked out the, the Yakuza, like, warlords. They're going to kill you. And Gintoki's like, it doesn't matter. Um, like, I, I'm not here for them. I don't care. I'm here because if we give up, like, if people who have no law, like you or me, 
also give up our humanity. There's nothing left for us after that. Um, and he's kind of like, he gives another speech. It's like, you're right, you know, I've done all this horrible stuff, yada yada, so why don't you kill me in, as retribution for me shooting you? Um, Kitoki refuses, and then, like, he's staring down this gang of troops, and that's when he realizes that that's why uh, they invited him here, is they never planned to let him take over. It was always a plot to assassinate him. Um, he fights the gang off a little bit, but he starts losing until Gintoki jumps in and helps him. And then they turn the tide, and Gintoki says that he's going to take him over to the dad's grave, because he he also calls the old man his father, because we get his backstory, and it turns out that the old man took him in when he was like a street urchin, and he became very close with the son. Uh, and he basically became like another son to them. Uh... Kentoki is helping him and realizes that he knew it was a ruse, and then we learn the truth of what happened, which is a fight happened between the father uh, and the son about him being the successor. And the son says, I don't want to be the successor. You have... Uh, what's his name? Ky Kyojiro? Kyojiro? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have Kyojiro. Uh, he's here. He's a better successor than I am, so let him take over and let me live my life. And the father refuses because to him, that's his way of showing the son that he loves him. It's like, I want you to be my heir or whatever. Um, and he ends up punching the son in the face after the son says that Kyojiro is a better son than I am. Um, and he runs away crying, and Kyojiro goes and looks after him, or he like looks for him later, and he finds him in that shed, but he had hung himself. Uh, he took his own life in the shed. So Kyojiro buried the body and then concocted this rumor that he killed him. Uh, basically, I, I guess to spare the father of uh, the realization that the son killed himself because of his actions. I'm not entirely sure why. He, he yeah. specifically says he killed him. I think he's... Mm, I know I know the reason that they're keeping it hidden is to specifically have it that, but then when it's discovered that when he's not there, he, doesn't, he just basically doesn't want it to be known. He doesn't want the father specifically to be known that he was kind of the reason that he did it. I want I want to say it's probably has something to do with like being, you know, you know, it's really weird. Cause uh, this is very hard to talk about. I I'm talking specifically in the mindset of the characters and in not in that specific instance and not anything else. I think he would probably see it as the way that he was specifically taken out as like, maybe a hit to honor of some kind and he didn't want people to know or he didn't want him to know specifically that he was kind of the reason why because it seems like that is what is implied is that he was the reason why that he did it um or at least the father would take it as he was the reason why he did it because he's the one who ended up adopting kyojiro and that's what eventually would lead to their kind of like falling out between each other and then that specific like feeling of not being a good enough son is what led him to do what he did so if he had learned the truth, then he would probably be devastated, and he didn't want that for him, because he was the only person that ever treated him like an actual person. Because up until that point, he had been treated like garbage, like like nothing, and this guy just wanted to see him be happy, and he probably just wanted the same for him. That's what I'm assuming would have been his reason for not he why he wouldn't want to go this far. It seems like really weird, and I also feel like there's some cultural stuff here that might be at like a difference in kind of way of thinking that i'm not 100 percent sure like of. i don't know suicide is like shameful or something i guess so yeah he, don't want, he yeah. doesn't want him to be like dishonored that way so mm -hmm. he'd right because i know kentucky gives him a speech of like you want to take all of the the blame for everything on your own shoulders so that neither the father or the son have to take any yeah um, yeah Th so that maybe yeah i definitely feel like but, it has something to do with that but yeah continue on continue on uh, yeah, so they're they're fighting, and Kentucky is trying to help him escape. Um, he ends up getting shot uh, in the back while they're running away. Um, Kentucky is trying to drag him through the streets of Edo to get to uh, a doctor at first because he doesn't want him to die, and then he says that like you know it doesn't matter what we do at this point, I'm I'm dead. It's hit like a a vital area. I'm gonna die. Uh, so instead, he brings him to the father's grave, and he like kind of leans up against the gravestone, and he dies there as well. Yeah, with a smile on his face. Mm -hmm. Which I think is the first time the character smiles throughout the entirety of the two episodes that we have him 
have him here. I think it is, yeah, which is also kind of sweet because the the whole thing is when he gets adopted, the father says, uh, I want to take him in and I want to see what he looks like without those angry, like, wrinkles on his nose because he's always scowling and, like, angry. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, so when he dies, he smiles because he's with the dad. Yeah. And, yeah, that's this episode. What a complete... Almost like, except for when Gintoki comes in, it's basically no jokes, right? Very little. Like, there's the one with um, where Shimp- where Shimpachi and Kagura are talking to the Yakuza guy, and I want to say like they have a little bit of a jokey joke there. But basically, that's it for the. And when Gintoki shows up and he makes his, it's really more badass than it is actually like a joke of when he shows up. He's again. like making fun of him, but it's not like I mean, it's like jokey. He's like cracking jokes at him, but yeah, it's played much more as if he's making a cool entrance than it is him like actually being funny. Yeah. So none of that, just one hundred percent like serious as hell. And again, after <laughs> you can feel the the whiplash in from how it, it goes from our soccer one to this one and just hear the whiplash of how different it is between the two because it is intense um i really like this episode though it was a very like a lot of the setup happens in the first one and then a lot of the payoff happens here up until like when he reveals what actually happened i assumed that the son was still alive um that was my thought too was that the son was still alive somewhere and this whole plot and everything was to convince everyone that he was dead so that they wouldn't look for him yeah and then there was like a brief bit of time because there was a lot of time where they just weren't showing the face of the kid like i think throughout the first part of this one and through all of the other one they didn't show his face at all so i thought like maybe there was a case here was where the son actually had been him all along maybe but no and then they reveal what actually is what happened and what actually happened was just a just a very sad state of events they got to hear um which is yeah it's real Tough. It's, tough. it's tough yeah it's real tough um I, I, the some of the, the a lot of the stuff i liked is a lot of like seeing the family home like a lot of like what he was going through and what he's kind of like trying to fight against the kind of upbringing he had which was being like the guardian dog of what he was and trying to be like someone who actually had some form of affection on him which was I don't know, I find it was very, uh, very touching. Like, they actually do something that I don't think I've seen touched on a whole bunch, which is when, um, they're, like, hanging out together, and he says, like, it felt so weird because he, like, felt, like, a a love that had just not been there before, like, he had never experienced it before, and that's when his... Uh, the son actually like when he's a kid he like goes to go for his hand and that's just for him to be like be with him and he's like i've never felt anything like this and it wasn't a sense of like he would never felt like he was trying to get what the son had it wasn't anything like that it was genuinely feeling like this is like an actual family that i can have and this is something worth protecting and i want to protect with everything um even the bit to where he because he has a scar and they actually show how he got the scar and he got it from protecting the son and he got like slashed in the eye um and that was also probably where you start to see some of the rift that start to happen between the son and the father because when his son was in danger um when he saw what happened to the two kids he ran to him as opposed to his own son because he treated them i guess he saw them both as equally as his sons and he just saw that one of them was injured and he said like his the tears that he he gave me were warm and touching and it was all very like very nice touching things and it's just a damn shame that he was not able to change the kind of ways that he was that's why he probably says at the beginning that dealing with the yakuza when you're a nice guy is just no good end game because that's what he was is that he was just trying to leave it and he didn't want to be a part of it and for whatever reason his father wanted him to take over because that's all he really knew, and that's how he would have been able to show his love for him. But it was just something that the son was not interested in. And either because he's not interested in it because he doesn't want to live that lifestyle, or if it's because he sees that his brother that he has been raised with his entire life is much better at it than him. Don't know that far out, but it was very clear that he thought that he didn't need to be there for that. And it's just a very sad state of things that ended up going the way it was, and... 
yeah, that he felt that he had to kind of shoulder this entire burden just to keep what is essentially a family secret. Like, he would prefer it if everyone just blamed him and said, like, he was the reason why so many of the bad things happened as opposed to what actually happened, which was much harder to justify, which is just, like, sometimes... I don't know, families argue, and you don't really think about stuff in the heat of the moment, and then, you know, tragedy happens. And that's much harder to kind of, like, <laughs> sell as a story when you're Yakuza, I guess. But, yeah, I thought it was really well done. I really liked it. Um, how'd you feel about it, Zen? It was good. It was really good. Uh, as soon as this one became emotional, I started going through the checklist. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> I knew that guy was going to die. 100 million percent he was going to die. Nobody that is the focal character of an emotional mini-arc lives in Gintama, ever. Um, and I was right, he dies. Uh, I, I assumed also that the son was alive. I thought that they were going to reveal later on uh, that he was gone somewhere. At first I thought that they were going to get him to come back. And then I was like, well, you know what, maybe what's going to happen is... Um, we'll just see that he's alive and we won't go and get him back and they'll just choose to like let him be happy and not know what happened. Uh, then we find out that he had killed himself uh, and that the, the the adopted son was like distraught because he loved them both. He loved them like an actual family. Uh, and he was just trying to protect both of them as best as he could. Uh, Gintoki's little bit there where he comes in to try to save him is great. And I also kind of like that Gintoki failed at what he was trying to do. Not that it's the first time that's ever happened, but uh, they kind of really played it up as like the Gintoki was the cavalry coming in to save the day and it didn't end up working out. Yeah, he even had the line of like, I'm not going to let any more of his sons die. Mm -hmm. And And then uh, unfortunately he gets shot not too long after that. Yeah. You're right, I never, yeah, he he really does doesn't succeed. You actually don't see that very often. Where I guess the main character just completely fails. I guess in a in Gintama, I can't actually think of too many times where I can think of they actually failed the job. Like I think this is this is one of them, right? Yeah, I think that usually, like, I mean, obviously, there's a shitload of sad episodes where like yeah. it just doesn't, whatever it is, doesn't work out. Um, but yeah, I, I think this is the only time I can think of where like everything is a failure from like start to finish basically yeah and it might also be kind of a play on the the idea of the you know the yakuza type of trope as well is that there's no real happy ending when it comes to yakuza stories there's really only one way it can ever actually end um which yeah which is uh different from what i use what i'm used to in yakuza stories actually that's not true there's a lot of <laughs> i was gonna say yakuza does that has a lot of uh a lot of failure in it now that I think about it. A lot of Kiryu not being able to save the day uh, and losing a lot of things related to him as well. So, yep, I thought this was a uh, a good episode. Also very hard to talk about. <laughs> yeah, it's it's tough. Yes. Because uh, this episode also specifically never makes a point to say, like, who's who's right. Um. Yeah. It never, it never makes a point to be like, oh, the the dad was right to want this, or the son was right to want to get it. They kind of are just, everything sucks, and it's just kind of this guy trying to pick up the pieces uh, and do what he thinks is doing right by this family as best he can. Yeah, Gintoki doesn't even have his real big speech either. He, he says a lot of words about trying to save, but at the end of the day, he doesn't get to deliver that. He just kind of delivers him to the, to the grave site and just kind of... Is, silently watching and that's it which i think actually kind of fits with the title of the episode which are something just don't need to be said you just don't have to say anything and it's perfectly okay because there's no real easy answers to a lot of things (sighs) well on that note (laughs) i think do you have anything else to say before we go on to the next one nope all right Let's go on to the... Now, if you're talking about the tonal whiplash, (laughs) let's talk about episode 109, Life is a Test, which also takes a completely different 180 spin from from the previous episode. All right, Zen. Yeah. 
Tell us what it's about. Uh, Yamazaki's here. There's never not <laughs> something silly related to Yamazaki. Oh, that reminds me. There was actually a really good Prince of Tennis bit where they were talking about in the soccer one where they were saying, like, I hear Gintama is actually doing much better. He's like, oh, it's like, I actually hear it's because of Prince of Tennis is doing really well. So we have a <laughs> so we have a very strong lead in. He's like, "Oh, is that right?" He's like, "And for some mysterious reason, here's a <laughs> here's a sports episode." Yeah, wasn't that the one where they were like, "Oh, we get a lot of fan mail, but there's no faith in us." Yes, Tokyo's very Gintama's very popular and continuing. In its third, yes, the, I think that's the one where they said that. I, it reminded me because um, at the beginning here they do a Prince of Tennis bit because Yamazaki is in his. Uh, princess tennis outfit yeah he starts this episode in the prince of tennis outfit and he's like uh gintama coming soon uh you've still got a long way to go which is the catchphrase of the main character of <laughs> prince of tennis pretty funny oh the uh, the uh, the other bit that we completely forgot is that in the other one they they do the original intro where they says like uh, Gintama, like they did from the beginning of the of the series, where they say like, oh yeah, Gintama oh, in like the year, back, yeah, this the Amanto came and all this stuff, yeah. And then Toki's like, why are you doing this? And I was like, well, we have a lot of new people watching now, so I just figured, you know, it's a good idea, just let them know what Gintama is again. It's like, oh okay, <laughs> I, I guess <laughs> well, you, it makes sense. Go ahead. So yeah, the episode 109 is Now that we go, we went back to Soccer 1 for a bit. Let's go into this one. So uh, 109, uh, Yamazaki is going undercover trying to infiltrate the anti-foreigner faction. Uh, he's talking about how like the only one in the Shinsengumi who's able to do it is him. Because, and he's like listing off all of his skills. And then he's like, also, you have to be extremely plain and like <laughs> uninteresting. In order to make this work. So the only one who can do it is me. Um, he goes up to two guys that are part of the anti-foreigner faction and he asks to join them and he does so by immediately saying, I am not suspicious, which is really <laughs> funny. Um, they take him to Katsura and they're at a, at a maid cafe having like a job interview. And he's like, all right, uh... You know, you're you're supposed to come in a suit, no company, once just some guy showing up. And he's, like, acting like it's an actual job interview. Mm. Um, and then they end up going to an exam where he has to, like, answer questions. And it's, like, framed like the tuning exams from Naruto. <laughs> where he's like, I get it. This is, a, this is an exam to test your abilities, not your act. Like, it's okay that I didn't study for this. Um the vast majority of the questions are about Jackie Chan's nose. <laughs> um, almost all of them, actually. There's one that's really funny because it's like, all right, so uh, six members of the anti-foreigner faction and eight members of the Shinsengumi meet on a battlefield. Two members of the Shinsengumi are killed, but they retaliate and they kill four members of the anti-foreigner faction. Then more Shinsengumi reinforcements arrive. How many noses does Jackie Chan have? <laughs> Um, and then he, the Yamazaki, like super, like analyzes it. He's like, "What if Jackie Chan lost his nose in the middle of the fight?" Yeah, because they, every single time the que the answer to the question has been obvious, and it's been a ridiculous like question that made no sense. Um, and so he's like, "All right, this one also must make no sense." And that's the only answer where it's the obvious one, where it's like one. He has yeah. one nose. <laughs> <laughs> also, there's this guy taking the exam with him who's, like, completely out of his depth, and he keeps fucking up all of them. And after the, uh... The how many noses does Jackie Chan question... Uh, does Jackie Chan have question? He goes, ah, trick question. And his answer was 134. <laughs> <laughs> Nowhere close. <laughs> and then, um... He's in the entrance exam, and he accidentally thinks that he gets outed as a spy but he doesn't they they think that he wants to join them as a spy like for them and so then dragon leader busts through the wall <laughs> and does like a tra <laughs> dramatic role and it's just jackie chan so i get uh, oh my god this fucking reveal killed me <laughs> when he fucking busts through that wall I was like is that fucking jackie chan <laughs> then um they they go to infiltrate this uh, thing to steal this secret document and then Katsura shows up and he's like screaming at the top of his lungs like you did it 
but now you have to get the secret document back to our base. And then they get noticed. <laughs> and then Katsura was like, oh, you got noticed by the enemy. That's pretty naive of you. I'm going to have to dock points. Um, they're like trying to escape and they're going through all these ridiculous scenarios. Uh, and then they realize that as they're escaping, it's still part of the exam. Because they're like giving him questions while they run. Um, they get a new a new guy. But what, what was his name? It's like Dragon... Dragon Son, and then the other one's like like Fat Son or something, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, which is based off of uh, Sammo Hung, the other martial artist from Jackie Chan's days. Uh, <laughs> I mean, he's like his name is like Fat and Fat Pawn or something like that. It's it's Dragon Dragon something, and then instead of Dragon, it's it's Fat. Is the other guys? Yeah, I know. I know. There's Dragon Leader, and then there's the other one that is based off of. Samo Hung, but I cannot remember. I just remember him being fat. I just remember that it started with fat, and that's about it. Um. Yeah, so they're, like, escaping. Uh, and they get jumped by these enemies, and they're fighting them off. And, uh... Yamazaki ends up going back to save Katsura and Dragon Leader from the enemies that are beating him up. And then Katsura goes... In what might be my favorite joke in the episode, he goes, Sometimes, as an anti-foreigner faction member, you must be cold-hearted. You should have left us behind, so I cannot give you any points <laughs> for the exam. But you do pass as a human being. <laughs> uh, and so then they he ends up escaping, and Katsura and Dragon Leader stay behind, and they're like, you have to get that back to our base. You can do it. We, we're, we'll happily die for our comrade. And Yamazaki's, like, crying as he leaves them behind. Uh, and then it turns out it was all part of the exam. And they're, like, clapping and cheering for him. And, like, you did it. You're a loyal member of the anti-foreigner faction. And then he immediately drops his Shinsengumi ID on the floor. And they all see it. And that's where it ends. And no, wait. And then there's a special uh, credits for this episode. <laughs> to make yes, it l- it's like a film reel credits. Yes, yeah, to make it look like a, the end of a Jackie Chan movie. <laughs> And uh, I thought for a second that, that they were going to put bloopers in there because they actually make a joke about like, oh, this is where we save it for the bloopers because that's what happens at the end of every Jackie Chan movie. Whenever he fails a stunt, they save it for the bloopers. Uh, but yeah, yeah. The, the stunt that they fail is funny too because they're like, uh, what's the correct answer? And then Elizabeth is there with a table of options and Yama's like, it's got to be one of these options. And then they go, the correct answer is this. And they jump up onto a clock <laughs> and they grab on to the, the, the clock hands. Yep. And Yamazaki's like, oh, of course. And then they fall off. And it's like slow-mo. They keep falling off and hitting these <laughs> awnings. And they hit like four awnings before they hit the ground. Dude, these Jackie Chan jokes were fucking killing me. Because I was like, that's exactly what would happen in a Jackie Chan movie. Where you just hit so many awnings on the way down. <laughs> to help break the fall of some gun. Um... Yeah, this episode is is it is not it, it was a good pick me up from the last one because I needed something and what it turns out what I needed was Jackie Chan aka Dragon Leader who is <laughs> Dragon Leader. Also, he says, "What's the most important thing to defend on missions? Everyone thinks it's your balls, but it's your nose." <laughs> and then later on, he's defending his nose and gets kicked straight in the balls. Yeah, he blocks a punch to his nose and they kick him in the balls. Yeah, and then when he's on the bike, he's like, you should have been protecting your butts. Because <laughs> they both, like, stab themselves with the ass uh, when they're on the bikes. And they make, like, both him and Kotsar both make, like, this Jackie Chan sour face. Uh, which is really good. Um, so, yeah, this episode, I ended up really liking it. I like that Project Zura was a clear parody of Project A, which is another Jackie Chan movie. <laughs> I like that Dragon Leader, when he shows up, he's in the outfit from uh, Project A as well, I think. Like, this, the getup that he's wearing at the beginning when he shows up, very same. I like that Yamazaki immediately says, are you Jackie Chan? He's like, I'm clearly not Jack. He's like, um, you look like a ripoff of Jackie Chan. He goes, I am not Jackie Chan. <laughs> Don't worry about that. I'm nothing like him. And he's very clearly just Jackie Chan. Um, and yeah, I like that also they keep making fun of Jackie Chan. I never noticed how big Jackie Chan's nose was until I started this episode, <laughs> and now it's- until this episode points it out, yeah. Yeah, I was like, oh shit, he does kind of have a really big nose. I also like that he keeps defending his nose throughout the entire fight scenes that he's doing, 
Uh, which is yeah, really all of the attacks that he takes, he blocks his nose. He blocks his nose to protect it. Um, which makes me now think if I look back to a lot of Jackie Chan movies, he just never gets hit in the nose. Hey, no, no, actually, that's not true. He gets hit in Rush Hour too, from what I remember. He gets popped in the in the nose or in the face. Actually, I need to rewatch that again. I'll come back here next week after I've watched a whole bunch of Jackie Chan films, and I'll let you know if I, if I, if I saw any hits to the nose or not. Um. I like that bit. I like the bit where he's kind of giving an interview to Yamazaki, and he's Yamazaki's just like he's giving me such a like a teaching here when he's doing it in a maid cafe, and then like he's playing like some form of rock paper scissors with the maid, and yeah, he, he also loses. He gets comically like thrown upwards as well, which is really funny. Um, I like that this is the way that they get people into the anti foreigner faction. Because it's like the most roundabout way to get people to the, join the anti-foreigner faction. Um, I like one of the test quizzes, which is like, how do you spell this out? And I think it says Shinsengumi. And he just puts down Shinsengumi, but then Katsura puts down, like, a scum. <laughs> yeah, it's scum. <laughs> or trash would also have been an acceptable answer or something like that. Um, th- there's a really funny bit where Yamazaki says, how come there's so many dead ends here? What is the Shogun thinking, designing things like this? And then a concert goes, very well thought out anti-foreigner. <laughs> I'm going to give you three yeah, points for really that. really good anti-foreigner answer. <laughs> going to give you three points for that, uh, which is <laughs> funny. Uh, yeah, I liked I liked a lot of this episode because a lot of it was just concert. If there's anyone who can help pull you out from a very, very serious episode, it's Katsura. <laughs> Yeah, Katsura is still my favorite character. He's so fucking funny. Yep, and the idea that he also just has a Jackie Chan lookalike in his anti-foreigner faction says a lot about the anti-foreigner faction, that they are equally as silly as anyone in the Shinsen Gumi are. If not equally as silly. I also really did like that entrance of when he's thinking about Jackie Chan, and he imagines Jackie Chan in the battlefield, and he's, like, sitting on a chair <laughs> fighting. Like the most Jackie Chan was like the only thing missing here was Jackie Chan fighting on a la- on a ladder. Like that's the only thing that was actually <laughs> legitimately missing is that bit there, and they would have had everything. Um, and yeah, that reveal of Jackie Chan it completely changed everything for me because I was like, I guess, like I for you, I was like they're really going hard on Jackie Chan for some reason. Seems kind of unnecessary. I don't know what they did. Maybe they're just really into it. But then when he shows up, it. It makes a lot of sense, and uh, it was a good old time. It was a good pick me up. So fucking funny when he shatters through that wall. <laughs> he does the camera movement as well. He does like there's like three different takes of it, <laughs> which is really funny. It, they also never address how or what he was doing that led to this moment either. It just kind of happens. Uh, how'd you feel about it, Zen? Oh, there was also uh, a really city hun- a city hunter reference as well. Which we have to also apparently make. there's a bunch of City Hunter references in this one. I don't know anything about yeah. City Hunter though. So. We don't. We have to eventually watch City Hunter the movie, uh, and the anime as well at some point. But I also really want to watch that. Obviously, the thing we probably know most about the City Hunter movie is that that's the movie. If you don't know the City Hunter movie, that's the scene where Jackie Chan dresses up as Chun Li and fights, and he's Blanca. That comes from the City Hunter movie. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, that's from the City Hunter movie. So, <laughs> it's, all right, pe- people probably know that scene more than they know <laughs> that that movie is yeah, based off of City from Hunter. Fucking City Hunter, yeah. It's crazy, but uh, yeah. That, okay, go ahead, Zen. Now tell us how you really feel. Uh, yeah, no, it was really good. Uh, I liked all of the jokes in it. Yamazaki's really funny, also when they let him do stuff. Um, all of it was good. I will say that I'm devastated that you didn't get to watch the next one because the next one might be the funniest episode that I've ever seen in the series. All right, everyone, stop. I need to hear your immediate reaction. Flame Wingman retrain, how do you feel? Hold on, what, huh? Yeah, they, they're they retraining Flame Wingman. Huh? 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 Uh, yeah, uh, new Heroes Fusion. It's literally just a retrain of Flame Wingman. I don't know what, what the effects does, but that's the new Flame Wingman art. You should go check on Twitter real quick. <laughs> Uh, uh, uh. It is just Elemental Hero Flame Wingman. Oh, what does it do? Someone tell me what it does. 
What does well, it do? Well, let me well, see. Explain it, that shit to me. <laughs> it's on Japanese. Oh, someone said they're bad. No! <laughs> Materials. Two elemental hero monsters with different attributes must be fusion summoned. You can only use each effect of elemental hero, flame wingman, skydive scorcher once per turn. If this card is special summon, you can add one favorite card from your deck or graveyard to your hand. What the fuck? I think that that's like literally a card called My Favorite Card. Well, there's a card called Favorite Hero. My Favorite. Uh, if this card that was fusion summoned by using a normal monster as a fusion material, you can tribute this card to special summon one level seven or lower elemental hero fusion monster or ever, elemental hero monster from your deck or extra deck, ignoring its summoning conditions. It seems kind of shitty. But I will. It, it's not good. But I could see like you could do stuff where you summon him, and then if you use like Neos to summon him, you can pull uh, any level seven or lower fusion from the extra deck as well. Mm. So that would be kind of cool. That's pretty cool. Nice but art. He loses. Though. It is really good art, but he loses the effect to do damage when he destroys something. Real. That's different because usually they, whenever they do a flame wingman. They make sure to they keep. Always has that. <laughs> they always doesn't, have doesn't, that. Doesn't Shining Neos Wingman even have that ability? Uh, yeah, I want to say almost every single Wingman. I think every Wingman has it except for this one now. Um, but yeah, so it's just to get favorite hero. But favorite hero only works if you have a field spell out. One favorite. I think it's, they have to be including more cards with favorite in it because it just says favorite. That means any card that has the words favorite in it. Favorite in it, yeah. But favorite here is the only one I can think of. Off the top mm, of my head. They're probably they're probably going to be releasing more. So we're going to s- wait and see on that one. But it is always exciting to see a new elemental hero. Unfortunately, I can't use my joke of a new elemental hero with twenty five hundred attack because this one has twenty one hundred. <laughs> yeah, it's the exact same stats as the old flame one. Very annoying that the flame wingman retrain sucks, but the uh, phoenix enforcer one is like the best card in the game. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, man! Imagine if they had actually made him on the same level as phoenix enforcer. Oh, uh, dude, he should be. One hundred percent. I agree. Judai's version, man. <laughs> Yeah, show some respect to the Judai version he was first. Yeah, what is it with the Judai just getting shit on? All his retrain cards suck. Even Shining Neo Swingman sucks. Man, fuck. Man, unfortunate. Very sad. Let my, let my boy breathe. <laughs> let him breathe. Anyway, let's get back to the episode. I, it was too important. I needed to see it. I, I understand. Uh, yeah, I was saying this one's fine, it's pretty good, but it's very devastating to me that you didn't see the next one. Because the next one has the only Gintama bit, I think, that has made me laugh out loud, like, in my seat. Really? Okay, then. We'll it, have to I'll look forward to that I, like, next I find week. a lot of it funny, but this other one was some of the funniest shit I've ever seen in my life. Mmm. Man. Again, it's a real shame that I was just so busy with work, but I, I'll... It I'm, is. The bit at the end of this episode... Is so fucking funny. <laughs> like, I was dying sitting there watching this happen because it goes on forever. Okay, I'll um, mm. yeah, I'll, I'll make sure. I'll obviously be seeing it for next week, and I'll look forward to seeing that. But it is a shame. I really did try and see as many as I could, but I was like, I, I like barely had any sleep in me <laughs> to be able to make all the the, the ten episodes in time, but. I assume it's going to be re- it's related to this one, isn't it? Because it seemed like somehow they were somehow Yamazaki was able to get Katsura captured. Uh, Katsura Katsura is in prison in this one. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. He he's caught because of it. Uh, it's really fucking funny. All right. I'll look forward to it next week when we talk about it. Then it's a shame I couldn't see it in time, but blame my work. I do. Every single day. Yeah, yeah. This one like is so funny that it makes the 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 one that we just watched like less funny by comparison because really? it's so fucking good. All right, wow, that's a, a huge endorsement endorsement for sure. But we will save that for next week, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. Gintama, that was episode 109. Next week, we're going to be doing episode 110, episode 109. No, episode 110. Episode, I went backwards in time. Episode 110, episode 111, episode 112, episodes 113, episode 114, and episode 115. Actually, hmm, 115 is the start of a new arc. So we might actually have to watch it to 114. I didn't realize it, but the next one is a, is a four-episode arc that starts on episode oh. 115. 
Oh god. So, so actually, um <laughs> Oh man. Mm, okay, we're going to have to make a live decision here. Next week was going to be up to 114. And then we accidentally actually saved ourselves a little bit. And then next week will be four episodes because we've made a rule not to watch any episodes <laughs> before or after of a, of a long arc. <laughs> so this one's yeah, four episodes. So it doesn't ruin it. Yes. So we're going to keep it pure there. And then starting from episode 119, we'll go to 120, 121, 122, 123. And that will have... Uh, we have to get back into normal. Let me see. One... To, we'll figure out from that. We'll eventually get back right on the numbering order, but for now, that's what we're going to be doing next week, is that we're going to go up to episode 114. Um, and then we will have the arc that's called Ryu Gojo? Gojo. Gojo arc. <laughs> that will be that one. That will be two weeks from now, and that's how we're going to be doing it. Um, wow, I didn't. I should have looked ahead of that. So yeah, it ends up being that we're going to end up... It did not matter that I missed this one. <laughs> Either way, we're going to have one less episode to watch next week. So, yeah, that's next week. So, look forward to that, everyone. Uh, if you want to see some more Zen, I suggest going to Zen's channel where he does Shonen and Chill with the Ocean Man. I bet things are really popping off with all the shit that's been going down in Jujutsu Kaisen lately. A lot of fun things to talk about there. Yes. Mm. Yes. Uh, mm. 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 that's all that's all we can say so that there's <laughs> no one that, <laughs> mm. Mm. that's it you can go watch zen mm, but uncensored mm, <laughs> over on his yeah, channel you can just uh you can just look at i have i'll have wokey edit in that picture that i tweeted that is now my profile picture that's just sitting there saying life update it got worse <laughs> that's that's Okay, yeah, send me that, <laughs> and I will gladly put it up at this point. Uh, for more of me, you can always go to my channel, where I'm there, chilling out, playing games, talking for go, also occasionally remembering to put this one up, uh, unless I go, I'm crazy busy with work, in which case, it's fly by your seat of your pants. You can also watch us on Monday, where we stream bad Genesis games. I need to still upload Vector Man, because I've been too busy with work to actually edit together and just release Vector Man. But this week, we're actually going to be playing a good one, because it's Aladdin for the Genesis. Yes. So, Aladdin's so good. Yeah, so come... Uh, okay, okay. I'm saying that it's so good, I really hope I'm right, because I haven't played it since I was little. I mean, there you could still find people arguing over the SNES versus Genesis version of Aladdin. I'm safe to say that Aladdin is at least considered good. It's not like Lion King, where it's like, I think if they had made the game less of a ball breaker, it would have been considered probably one of the greatest games of that generation. But they made it a fucking ball breaker, so it sucks. <laughs> it does suck. It's fucking awful. Yeah, so it, it's it's a fucking slog to go through. <laughs> so it's one of the worst ones out there. Vector Man, not that bad. I really did have to go back and think about the five-hour stream of Lion King <laughs> and say, like, okay, yeah, Lion King was worse. At least uh, the final boss of um, Vector Man was a very short one-minute walk to the boss. There was an entire level dedicated to Scar. Yeah, that. Oh man. With it's the death platform. And you have to use this niche ass mechanic to throw him off the ledge, or else he'll never die. Yeah, just mm, not good. But yeah, you can see a bunch of that stuff by going to my channel. And I guess you could also technically... F We're not sure how much longer Twitter is going to last. It seems like it's on its left legs. But if you want to find us there, we're there too. <laughs> you can find us there yeah, too. Yeah, however long it's around. Yeah, we ain't paying for no fucking Twitter blue. So we're going to be gone the second that they start limiting the, tw the tweet caps. But we'll be what there for now. <laughs> And yeah, that's it for Shonen Archive, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. As always, you can leave a like because it does help out. But if watching is actually good enough because I know that I, based off of the analytics that YouTube says to me, they're always saying like, yo, a lot of people are fucking watching this, which is really cool to see. A lot of people wa not only watch it, but there's a lot of people going through 30 minutes deep in. That's insane for anything, to be honest. <laughs> it's it's hard to watch, get someone to watch one minute length of a YouTube video. <laughs> So for 30 minutes, that's dedication. Thank you guys very much. And we will be back next week for more Gintama. Say goodbye, Zen. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye! <laughs> <laughs>